Good day and welcome to Talk Talks. My name is Steve Vallier and our topic today is more like focus on fashion. Um, people who like dressing, um, self-presentation, image and everything. So fashion is um, our focus today, especially African fashion. And here with me is one of the um, fashion designer, African fashion designer, uh, Ms. Awa, who is the uh, founder of uh, Rosé. It's an online uh, African fashion shop. So welcome, Awa. Thank you. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, okay. So uh, African fashion is getting big, um, real big now. I think it's like one of the um, the biggest things in fashion at the moment in terms of the variety, color, and so much potential in terms of what could be done with it and where it could be taken. So um, as the owner of, of online fashion shop and a young African woman, uh, what inspired you to get into fashion? So my inspiration um, originally came from my childhood. Um, I guess often when I reflect back to my childhood, uh, I miss wearing African clothes every yeah. day. <laughs> that was the first big one. Um, and the second um, big inspiration was also just how expensive or how unattainable um, the fashion pieces were. So um, I wanted to create something that was, um, I, I guess anyone can wear. Okay. Um, so whether the accessories, which are part of my for accessory uh, collection, or the skirts, which are part of my 360. Mm -hmm. So it means you can wear it every day of the year, 24 oh, okay. hours a day if you wish to. For accessories, pretty much accessories for people with fro, so Afro hair, um, just in case some people are wondering where the names is, come yeah. from. Um, and then I have my recent collection that I'll be adding to the end of this month, which mm -hmm. is the wrap collection. Okay. Um, so the wrap collection pretty much um, is um, a, a, a top and you can wrap it around you. Um, so any size, you can fit any size. Mostly I'm doing at the moment is small to large. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, we'll see how we go in the future because I only launched it, um, the website two months ago. So okay. um, obviously, uh, the longer we go through it, hopefully mm -hmm. I'll be able to uh, get some more inspiration. So oh, okay. yeah, I'm hoping to, um, I guess, make it more accessible to the African or um, the general community to be able to have the love, you know, for African fashion again, you know, because I think if um, they're able to, um, you know, if they can afford it, then they can uh, wear it more frequently, which will be amazing. The start of everything is difficult, you know, um, a lot of work. And, but the one key thing is support, you know. Yes. What is it like for you? Do you get um, support out there? And just talk to um, about starting a business and how uh, some of the challenges and what are you facing at the moment? Mm. I think the biggest challenge for me is, um, just like any other business, it's awareness. Um, I do have a business background, but you don't really learn uh, about business until you're running a business. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <That's not. laughs> so, um, you know, I always say to people, experience is what, what it takes. You know, sometimes the books don't necessarily, um, you know, teach you all you need. Mm -hmm. So because my business is online and um, what I wanted to do, like I said before, is um, use the, um, the economies of scale and see how I can make the clothes more accessible. So I've had to source my products, mm -hmm. um, you know, internationally, okay. not particularly in Australia, mm -hmm. but the designing does happen in Australia. Um, so marketing, sourcing, there are two big things. And also uh, staying relevant. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's another big thing. So what I'm trying to come up with is pieces that you can wear any time of the year, you know, uh, whether it's summer, winter, spring, autumn, you know, they will be relevant, um, you know, in any season. So that's a big challenge. And yeah. also uh, accommodate, uh, accommodating the African woman chef. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. <laughs> it's a big uh, <laughs> challenge. But like I said, I like a good challenge. So, yeah, yeah I think I'm going all right okay. on that part at the moment. Oh, that's good, <laughs> yeah. that's good. Yeah. And um, I'm using uh, this uh, piece and a bow tie. It looks great. It's from uh, Rosé yeah. and it looks good. Um, people appreciate it. It's my second time oh, uh, wearing it and people really appreciate it. Uh, so go. that's good. But then like I talked to you before and there was, um, you have limited collection for men. And, um, and you know, I'm big on African fashion now. It's, mm. you know, it's good. Um, it's taking over yeah. um, and when do you you know have enough things for men like for uh, men. more collections for men yeah um, 
because I'm only two months into the business, um, I'm hoping to extend it six months, eight months from now. We mm. don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Um, so I do have a few pop-up shops coming up. Okay, yeah. um, and like I say, it all depends on uh, the amount of revenue I bring in every yeah. month. So um, the wrap collection is the latest after two months of going. So um, it's not going to come until the end of July. Okay, um, yeah. We'll see how that collection does. And um, if it goes really well, then the revenue that I'll get from that, I'll hopefully invest it into African men uh, tops. Yeah, um, yeah. The same thing again, you know, um, I guess it's harder to design a top that would make it comfortable for an African man, whether they have a big belly or six yeah. packs. <laughs> So the challenge is still there, but yeah, I'm okay. still, I'm trying to come up with ways that I can, you know, come up with a shirt that, you know, a man can feel comfortable in because yeah, yeah. the African print or Ankara print or Kitenge, whichever term you refer to, there's no elastic in them. So it's very um, still, very cotton, it's cotton based, 100% cotton. So um, how sometimes working with that can be challenging. Yeah. So, oh, okay. uh, but there's something coming up for you. Yeah, yeah, you should, yeah, you should have it. Like, um, yeah. yeah. We may, uh, sometimes uh, we tend to be overlooked. You know, yeah, the, the focus is always yeah. on you know, women. women yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys should. Yeah, include. I think also the focus for me was for women because when you look at the statistics, women are the one that shop. Yeah, shop. You know, yeah. so um, as a business, so you try to uh, cater for the biggest uh, market that you have. Um, but I, I guess that's why I wanted to also have the accessories for men because I didn't want to purely be rosé for mm. just women, but okay, yeah. rosé for men and, and the children can wear the skirts because they start from size 6 to 12 so and they're quite flexible. So I'm wearing one at the moment mm. and you can stretch it. So as, oh, okay. this is a size, a size 12, I'm a size 14. Everyone knows yeah. what size I am yeah. now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I can wear a size 12 skirt. And it will look just fine. It will look any different. A size six can fit a size eight, and a size ten can fit a size a twelve Australian. So, okay. um, yeah, <coughs> that's what I mean by making it comfortable and flexible yeah. for people to wear it. You know, because often if you buy an African outfit from a traditional shop, um, there is not much flexibility yeah. in the material. So, if you put on weight, or if you go to a party and eat more than you expected, um, you might not walking out with you know, <coughs> yeah, looking as good as you walked in. Yeah. yeah. So just like um, as a designer, right, yeah. um, through your brands, your collection, what message do you send? Like what do you hope to add to African fashion? Um, I think um, the biggest thing I want to see again, like, you know, going back to my childhood memory, I want to see more people embracing the African culture, not just through food, but through fashion. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, fashion tells a story and, you know, often you can uh, tell a little bit about somebody about what they wear. Yeah. So, you know, we, we have the Western clothes that we wear every day. I, I think I want to see more African fashion being embraced by Africans. And, you know, we go to um, Asian festivals and they're all wearing Asian, Asian clothes, clothes, you know, yeah. like I want to go to an African festival and see African in African clothes. I want to go to an African party and see them in African clothing. So mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping I'll be able to contribute to that. Yeah, and I think that is quite possible, though, because, like, look at a music video, mm. um, and I think there's more appreciation yeah. of yeah. African attire, African fashion yeah. at the moment. But it all depends on you guys, you know, being creative with it, because Absolutely. that's one of my uh, uh, problems yeah. or issues with African fashion. Mm. Back then, it was pretty standard. Yeah. Um, there was yeah. a bit lack of creativity. Yes. But now I'm seeing more of it. And I think with uh, our Australian designers, mm. uh, I know there are constraints in mm. terms of, you know, you have to outsource. But yeah. You know, that creativity is very yeah. important. Everything is about style nowadays, yeah, you know, of so course. Yeah. it's um, very, the very important. The inspiration is still from Africa, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that's where the fashion comes yeah. from, you know. And I think um, I want to ensure that in all the pieces that I make, there is still that uh, reflection back yeah. to Africa, mm -hmm. um, because I don't only source my material, not just from Africa, but around the world. Okay. Um, so, um I think it's important to not lose the sight of where your inspiration comes from. Okay, yeah, because you know. um, yeah, like I said, when I look at Asian fashion and, you know, their fashion here reflects fashion in Asia, 
you know, so that's important to them. And I think I want to keep that African story alive with all my pieces. Okay. Yeah. So uh, before I let you go, uh, how can people access Rosie and what message will you like to send to the potential customers, our audience out there? Perfect. Um, so there is uh, three ways to access Rosé. One is through Facebook. So if you uh, put in uh, Rosé label, just tag Rosé label. Rosé is R-O-S-E-E. -E. Um, label, just as in fashion label, uh, via Facebook on Instagram. Uh, you should be able to access my page through that way. Otherwise, you can um, uh, Google or go onto your um, uh, you know website link and just put www.rose.com.au mm -hmm. um, and you should be able to access that at the moment i do have um, a 10 percent off oh, discount, uh, yeah. discount going on you just have to go on the website um put in your email and it'll give you a code uh, and then you'll be able to uh, purchase everything and get your 10 percent off um, I'm also wanting through Rosé to partner with um, smaller businesses or projects um, such as yourselves yep. and see how we can work together. I think it's all about supporting each, each other. other. We yeah. are living outside of our continent and it's important to keep that cooperation um, together because you know I think we can do more and better if we support each other. So um, I'm hoping to partner once, you know, I've cut my losses mm -hmm. with, you know, starting mm -hmm. a business, of course, <laughs> you're running on deficit. Yeah. So once we start reaching those surpluses, I'm hoping to invest the money back into the community, whether it will be through partnerships or yeah. through scholarships. Um, I'm a very, I'm very passionate about education yeah. and people having the ability and access to good education. So um, I hope through Rosé, I'll be able to achieve that. Just yeah. that. And I think we look forward to... Uh, working with you in terms of partnership and supporting the community. And I think that's what we all represent. Absolutely. Um, so it is important we do that. And we are pretty much open, very open to that. And we have a uh, demonstration after, right? Yes, we do. So I'm going to show you how to wear your head wrap because I've been um, asked so many times, how do you wear it? You know, I like how you wear your head wrap. How okay. do you do it? I'll show you how to do that. And I'll also show you how to wear the um, choker. Uh, so there is three ways you can wear it, which is awesome. So mm. you can wear one, buy one thing and wear three ways. So that's a great deal, I oh. think. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah, I think we'll do the demonstration okay, let's in a second. You just need to do a twist. So twist it like that. And then what you want to do is like a circle. So you often see this one a lot. This is more of a traditional you know, African mum sort of thing. They tend to do this one a lot. It's much easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just make sure you tuck in the back. And what I tend to do is I twist the material. Bring it to the front. So that was a beautiful demonstration. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting how you could do so many things uh, mm -hmm. with that one piece. Um, and I think if you like what you see, uh, hop onto Rosie's website and show some love and support. Uh, I've started and we will uh, su support you as much as we can. It's a good initiative for our community and we look forward to working with you uh, in future. 
and um, wish the best for your business. So just want to say thank you for coming on and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.